hands on TV. Quick fix, quick fix. Every time I see this show, it's the uh, it's, uh, same show. What the hell is a quick fix anyway? I say we watch Wapner. I want to have lunch. I want to watch Wapner. Uh, anything but these two scavozers again. What rock did they crawl out from under? An all-star cast, headed by Henry Fonda. Why don't you boys just pipe down and give him a chance? Oh, listen to him. Mr. Lipper with the skinny daughter and the rich husband. I say we watch Wapner. Twelve angry members. I say we get rid of the damn TV. After you, the way it says. Oh. Hey, that's not a real kitchen. Hey, okay. Trust me, toasted date night bread, cream cheese. Now Spain owes me money. Welcome to yet another quick fix show. You know, we try and do these every so often because... Because they're easy. And so popular. So, ready yourself with the remote and gird your loins electronically. Ouch. Here we go. Here's a sofa bed. It's not as comfortable as a regular sofa. But then again, it's not as comfortable as a bed either. It's a lot like a mobile home. If you don't have the room, you don't have the room. A compromise and wait for the tornado. But who cares? Because most of the time, it's the in-laws who have to sleep on the thing anyway, right? And they enjoy complaining. So are you going to digress a little bit here? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you can tell how much your parents wanted you out of the house by how soon they replaced your bed with one of these. My mom, six hours, instant den. And rightly so. Now, these sofa frames are not as sturdy as regular sofas. Because they're really just a box frame with this with the mechanism. mechanism where the springs would usually be. Nevertheless, the first thing that's going to break on one of these is, is the, mechanism. the mechanism. Because the constant opening and closing and tossing and turning, uh, due to it feeling like a bag of doorknobs, will bend a major piece of metal like this over here on the side. And even if you straighten it out, it'll always bend back again in the same exact spot. So the fastest thing to do is to order a mechanism from the Mechanisms Are Us place and you install it yourself. And, and you get a drill gun, a drill. and then you see on the side, push up a little bit right. there, son, you'll find positioning screws at the bottom and the top. See, these are not to be pulled out. These are just to mark where the mechanism goes. They're hooked they're on there. On a slot. There will be screws in the other holes here. Right. So you got to take them out. I've got most of them removed. They've got one over there. And i got one over here. Yes. Uh oh, and drop down, and you've got one over there. Set that back. Oh, and then you will find that it will fly right out at you. And then you unhook it, and you take it out. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, go in that way there. Okay. Hey, this is some quick fix. Are you hooked, hon? Well, I'll push mine back. There you go. There you go. There we go. You're hooked on the on the screw there. All right. So before, I haven't been hooked since on phonics. Here, push push that back. Now, Isn't before it? you take it out and right into the trash for the trash man, you want to take some metal ties. And like a piece of hanger. Oh, yeah, a right piece here. of hanger, and you want to tie this up. Tie this up. Here. Or else it will attack the trash men. And then they'll want money. Oh, back from the mechanism store. Here Wasn't that a nice place? We had to unwrap it. And then... You get the new one, and you slip it over the positioning screws. Hold on there. Bottom. There we go. Put the bottom on first. There we go. I got it. And on the top. No, don't, don't. That's why we never took the positioning screws out. Hey, Ed. Yeah? Stop moving it when you get it on there, right? There you go. There you go. Now, leave it right there. Let me get in here. This is where you do with one hand. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And I'm just going to pull this up a little bit. Hold on. For my yes. friend there. I'm going to go right in here. Make sure the screw is, the driver's going forward. That's always a good thing. There you go. Got it. And now one for me. Now I'm going to make you wait. You always want to... Because you made them wait out there. You always want to slide it, this mechanism in underneath so the metal thing doesn't attack the back where all the great. fabric is. Another screw. Okay. 
heavy up because we got end dialogue here that's really great. Yeah, pull this up all the way, and then we just put one in there. Oh, oh, flip it down. I think we're ready. Oh. That's hey, the call. mechanism's back. Now you can put the mattress back, and you're ready for another sleepless, horrible night in the small room. With the dark paneling, where the window doesn't open. And there's no air conditioning. With the beaded lamp. And no bulb. And the digital clock has a hellish hum. And it grows louder and louder and louder with each interminable moment. As the beads of sweat avalanche down your tortured brow. Look at this. It's called a tea nut. What is it? Is it the new breakfast cereal with lots of iron? Gee, Mom, we want peanuts! No, it's what screwing legs get screwed into on upholstered furniture. Sometimes the furniture is delivered without the legs. The legs come in the bag. What do you do with the legs? you got to screw them into the peanuts, yeah! Sometimes you can't find the peanut holes. They're covered with fabric that's pulled under and stapled tight into the chair, so you have to find the holes you feel around, or you pull the fabric away, and you make a hole right through the fabric. Don't worry. Aunt Millie ain't looking under there. But sometimes the T-nut is missing completely. Quel tragic! So you have to replace the T-nut. You take the cambric or dust cover off and reach around inside. Ooh, it's like surgery. The T-nut is probably still rattling around inside there. If the nut isn't inside, make up your own line, then you have to go to the hardware store and take your leg with you <laughs> so you can match it up. Here's the new T-nut and a visual aid. Look, this is a mock-up of what the chair looks like inside because we can't get the camera up in there. So we will fish around and put the T-nut up against the hole with one hand and then begin to screw in the leg. This is a bun foot, by the way. Can you tell why? From the other side. You'll be flying blind in real life. And then as you tighten it, these teeth, start to grab and cut into the board. Keep tightening it. And as you can see, those teeth keep biting down into the board until, until, until you can't do it anymore. Commonly called a Morris chair because Morris sat here, I guess. Oh. As you can plainly see now, the arm is cracked here. And look what somebody did. They tied nice wire around here. And this wire works, but you know, if you sit down, you're going to snag your sweater cuff. So the first thing you got to do is take this wire off. Now, this is a compound brake because you got not only a brake here, all right. Now, look what's in here. Oh, look what happened. The spindles are all loose, and this spindle had broken off. Okay, so what I did was I drilled it out. I drilled it out with a drill and a half-inch bit. And I had to make a dowel because oftentimes, like in my shop here, <laughs> you, uh, you don't have a dowel, so you have to make one. So I had a dowel, but it's too big, and I used the belt sander to shave it down a bit to get just the size I need. But first you gotta clean the edges. So you break this piece off. Well, you don't break it off, you just bang it off. What do we call this? A tenon, okay? Not a tenant. That's somebody who gets mad at the landlord. This is a tenon, okay? Now the tenon must be cleaned of glue. And you scrub it with the wire brush. Now, for the glue, because I've already cleaned the spindles. There you go. With the chisel, scraping off the excess glue, and just go around like this. Because you want the glue to, bo to bond. Okay. And likewise with the holes, you can make a little roll of sandpaper and in the hole, like this. So we take some glue on the tenon. And using the tool at the end of your hand, and we'll put some in here. Number one piece, glue. Now, number two. 
number two piece. On the side here, into the mortis. That is mortis, not tortoise. And now around the spindles, out into the holes. We take this, we go like that. Now, remember the spindle that I made already. You see, I'm not working too fast here, but don't get panicky, because you can always break it apart. Little trick, I just like to do that. Put that in the, actually, because the glue is water-based, if you wet the wood a little bit, it will swell with the glue. It will actually get tighter in the hole. And here on this piece, that piece, and again on this side. Okay, now we put this in here. the glue is ready. Now all we got to do is clamp. And that's going to be a lot of fun. Pad. Pad. I'm going to go a little bit on an angle here. Like so. Ah, there we go. And don't go away. I'm just getting another clamp. Hey, we're dry now. Look, I put this clamp on. That was an extra clamp I put on. You didn't see me do that one. Likewise with this one. But sometimes you need more than two clamps. So there's the second one. Now we take off this one. And we take off this one. Somebody's supposed to be catching those down there, but they just ain't working right. Now you put a little bit of glue in here. I'm going to reconnect this arm. And we'll put this on. And then we'll put this on. Look. I'm going to reassemble the whole chair. And put this in here. And then go up here. And now I can sit. Got a queen size bed and a full size headboard, or a full size headboard and a queen size bed, or bed rails with hooks on them and a headboard with just holes? Do I have an ego that's so out of control that I think I can make this look interesting? Let's find out the answer to all these questions. So often standard bed uh, headboards are delivered with the frames and they don't match up. They, the frames have the flanges over here, but the headboards have the holes and they don't line up. Delivered at the same time, and when you call the store, they don't want to hear from you. The check has cleared. People lean the bed against the wall. That ain't right. Get an adapter plate. And this comes in various colors, and they will come with the long bolts and the short bolts, some uh, nuts and some washers, which I am not using. First thing you do is you line the vertical holes up, and you put the long bolts through there. The top one and the bottom one. I'm going to move this back just a little bit. And then I'm just going to make these a little tight back here so they don't start to fly off and muss me all up. Not too tight now. Mm -hmm. Now we line up the horizontal plates over here. Get a nice horizontal slot there at the top and one at the bottom. These are where you always put the short bolts. And now we get the nuts on the back. No washers for me. Of course, you get this old-fashioned tool you know, I forget what the heck this is called again. Something to do with the orange juice. And then we tighten that. And then we tighten the bottom one. And we'll tighten the long bolts now with my pliers. And there you have it. 
Unsightly, yes, but who the heck's down here? This is where the sham is. Oh, look at this. This is what I call a nasty burn. Fell right out of the ashtray. Some big oaf did that. I used to do a lot of bar tops, and this always happened on the bar top. I got a big burn like that. I used to call it a, a cockroach. And you can repair this. You can try sanding that out, but this is right down into the wood. I can see it. You can cut it out with an X-Acto knife, and then you can fill it with a burn-in or shellac stick. That's what these are. These come in all different colors, and you can select the color that matches your wood. This is what I'm going to use right here, this one, because it matches the wood the best. And I'm going to use this. This is a burn-in knife. You plug it in, it gets real hot. And it's got a different, uh, you can put different uh, blades in here. And this one is the one I'm going to use to melt this stick. But first I got to dig it out. So it's a matter of scraping away, cutting away all the black. It's like open heart surgery. You know that? Oh, my uncle had this done. Now, I'm going to use the stick, the shellac stick, and the knife. And it's trying to burn it right in here. Oh, it's good and hot. These burn and they smell. They remind me of, of mass when I was a little kid. I always want to hear some Gregorian chanting while I'm doing this because it smells heavenly. Very hot, too. All right, we got it filled. Now it's time to level. Let's see if it works. Yeah. In here, I got some uh, little bit of denatured alcohol and water, more water than alcohol. And I'm going to use that to level the surface. It's going to erode it. It will. It should. We always start with the mildest first, because then you know that if that doesn't work, you can always go to the sandpaper, which is what I'm going to use now, because that's not working too well. Actually, I'm going to show you all these steps, because if you've got a, a lighter burn, that would work. Here's a little bit of sandpaper. I'm making a going to make a dull spot on this table, but that's all right because I'm going to pad it afterwards with the padding lacquer. Well, it's leveled. Now it's time to pad, and you've seen me pad before. I'm not padding this bit though. I'm telling you, this is the actual you know time. You take this, go away. Take this uh, rag and fold it, just like diaper and make a little pad in the hand take the bottle with the padding lacquer in it remember it's an acetone based lacquer dries very fast don't hold it over the table because <laughs> if it falls on the table you've lost the table you have to do many many more burn ins disperse and go over it It's beautiful. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful, but come, come in, come in. I'll show you how to level tables. Look, the table is unlevel. This side, much higher than this side. Some people fix that by putting the large standing crown roast on the side that needs to go down and the lighter than all biscuits over on the other side. But this is what you should really use. It's called a table leveler. Screw it into the underside of the table and let this part straddle where the two sides or leaves come together. Make sure this side goes under the side that you want to raise. Watch closely while I apply just a little bit of drilling, screwing power. <coughs> Look, 
look, the table has come together. It is as flat as a mesa in Arizona. All right, I know you got a chair, and it looks just like this. At least parts of it do. You got some big way from the house. He's putting his feet on the on the rungs here, and they get all worn off over a period of time. So how do you get them? How do you get some color back on that without having to redo the whole chair? What you do is you get some dry artist pigments like this. Go uh, see that? That's dark. It's like a dark oak color. It's almost the same thing. Take some clear lacquer, spray it on a palette of some sort. See that? And then just go like this here. Now you got it on there. More lacquer on here. Hey, maybe I should just do this whole panel, huh? Now I'm going to rub it right on here. Look at that. So in essence, what you're making is a colored lacquer that'll go over the uh, over the worn spots. I want to put a little bit more in there because that still looks a little too new. There we go. Now, oh, that's that's what we want. I think that looks pretty now. Now, once you get this on here and you get it colored, you take the clear lacquer and. Now, was that quick or was that quick? Yeah, another quick fix show. Mm-hmm. I got excited. Yeah, mm-hmm. Look, Dykstra got a groin pull. Mm-hmm. Want to do another quick fix show sometime? Uh-uh. Well, that wasn't that bad. It went by too fast. I hope you're all happy, because Wapner now is over. Oh, get rid of the damn TV already. We haven't heard from you, Mr. Non-Angry Man. I think maybe you fellas were right. Let's hang him from the highest tree. Holy classic.